Right, uh, afternoon guys, hope you're all well. Welcome to another session of Network Architecture. And uh, in today's session, we'll be looking at uh, the virtual environment, just uh, uh, getting comfortable with VirtualBox, <clears throat> understanding exactly how to uh, load our virtual machines, and obviously having these particular machines uh, uh, link up or communicate uh, to make sure that we're all sorted as far as the second task um, of your POE is concerned. Now, ultimately, if you if you have a quick look at um, what is required of you as far as the actual uh, task two is concerned, um, you'll discover that uh, we're trying to mimic um, a, a physical space, obviously uh, uh, using the virtual platform that um, is availed for by such programs as VirtualBox, um, uh, VMware, Hyper-V uh, configurations there. But ultimately, I think it's, 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 it's imperative for us to get a clear-cut understanding of what is uh, distinctively required of us. So if you look at um, what you've got on screen there, these are, excuse me, the general instructions that are um, relevant as far as, as, as the second task is concerned. You've got six distinctive activities that are there. And obviously, you've got a duration that is uh, incorporated or indicated, but arguably, uh, this is more or less just a, a guideline, uh, uh, really, in terms of what it is that you need to spend uh, um, as far as, as each distinctive activity is concerned. And ultimately, you've got a mark allocation that is also incorporated there. So the actual background is you're a network administrator for a certain organization. And um, obviously you're looking at testing your abilities as far as using the Windows Server platform is concerned. Now, ultimately we're gonna be working with Windows Server uh, 2012 for release two. I think most of you, if you've done your research, release, uh, release two is still being uh, supported uh, by Microsoft, I think up until 2023, if I'm not mistaken. But um, uh, Windows, Windows Server 2012 on its own, has um, obviously been canned in terms of, of support, I think as of uh, the 14th of January, as far as this year is concerned. So we're looking at uh, release two, um, just um, understanding what's happening with the DC, your domain controller, looking at, at uh, Active Directory, DHCP, as well as DNS um, um, in terms of uh, the actual roles and basic functionality as far as your server platforms, they are concerned. So ultimately we did discuss the um, relationships or the models or the architectures associated with your uh, network configurations there. And obviously one of them, which is uh, distinctively clear cut is your client server model or client server architecture. And in this particular model, if you remember well, we mentioned that um, the roles are clearly defined. You've got a client that obtains uh, services from a distinctive uh, server. And if you remember well, we've mentioned uh, before that your server is a dedicated machine within uh, any network environment that is responsible for providing a specific service within that uh, um, network setup. And these services, like we mentioned before, print, web, um, your application, your DC platforms, your DNS and DHCP are all typical examples of um, what can be provided for or the services that uh, can be gotten as far as your, your servers are concerned. So the roles are clear cut, you've got a client that's always uh, getting services from your server. And remember an, a, a, another distinctive uh, um, uh, distinction uh, really between these two entities is that you've got a specific type of operating system, obviously your client operating system that is installed on your client and your server operating system that is installed on the server. So uh, in this particular example, you've got Windows 10 um, and then you've got uh, Windows Server. Uh, 2012 released uh, to them, all right? So you've got a diagrammatic representation of um, what this particular setup would look like. So ultimately, um, when you're looking at it from, from, from um, when you're looking at it from uh, a physical point of view, I think we've mentioned this before, you've got an actual uh, physical computer system uh, that will have your client installed, then you've got a physical computer system or physical machine that will have uh, server software installed. And then obviously uh, you've got a convergence point, which is going to be a switch, and uh, you'll need to use your, 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 your generic uh, um, uh, CAT5E or CAT6 to connect uh, 
uh, these uh, entities together. So you've got a physical machine, uh, so you've got two physical machines, and then you've got a, a networking, a central networking device such as a switch, and ultimately use a cable to connect uh, one uh, uh, particular machine to your switch, and you obviously need to use another cable to connect the other machine. So ultimately, this is, is the kind of physical setup that we want to uh, virtualize or that we want to simulate within the virtual environment, all right? So ultimately, you've got VirtualBox, you've got your Hyper-V, uh, you've got your VMware as typical examples of uh, the packages that uh, can be used there. Like I've said before in our previous sessions, VirtualBox is, 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 is my inclination really quite simple to use and uh, simple to, to understand. So I'm going to be illustrating that as far as today's session is concerned, just to get ourselves familiar with the program, like I've mentioned before, and also understand exactly how we can then uh, simulate uh, um, this particular physical situation that we, 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 we've got as far as uh, a typical setups is concerned. So you've got a server there that's running uh, 2012. You've got a uh, switch, and then you've got a client that's running Windows uh, uh, 10 there. So when it comes to your... Um, when it comes to, 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 to specs, I think we've mentioned, uh, we've discussed this before, and uh, we've mentioned the fact that um, you obviously need to be sitting with a machine that has at least eight gigs of RAM for the purposes of, of progress and smooth functionality between the actual um, um, the virtual machines as well as the host. If you remember well, we mentioned that um, it would be applicable for you to have at least two gigs of RAM allocated to uh, each machine, and then you have the four gigs reserved for your for your for your host, so that at least uh, the functionality is a bit smooth. So the machine that I'm using now, it's using um, it's got a, a four gigs of RAM installed. So I want you to actually see um, how slow it becomes when we run these machines concurrently. Because remember, ultimately, when you're looking at virtualization, you're typically running a machine within another machine. So, so, so what it typically means now is that if we've got our client running and our, our server running, and obviously the host, that means we've got three distinctive machines that are running concurrently at any uh, given point in time. Obviously, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we've got them uh, up and running within the virtual platform. So ultimately, it means that you've got the first one, which is obviously your, your host, which is the physical machine that is hosting uh, both uh, the physical uh, uh, environment and the virtualized platform. Then you've got the second one, which is your client. Then you've got the third one, which is obviously your service. So you're running three machines concurrently. So that's the reason why I was saying it's ultimately important for you to have um, the right amount of RAM installed to avoid any discrepancies in terms of the machine not running as... Uh, um, uh, smooth as you'd want it as far as your specific uh, setup there is concerned. So what we're going to do is look at um, the whole uh, virtual box platform and then obviously understand exactly how it functions, uh, um, why it's relevant, and uh, ultimately um, how you can make sense of that physical setup. Remember, the whole concept of virtualization normally is looking at a at, 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 um, uh, cost-saving exercise, really. And um, more often than not, I mentioned those six machines that are running concurrently, or those three machines rather that are running concurrently. So ultimately what it would then mean, if you're looking at it from a physical point of view, you'd now need to have uh, uh, three physical computing systems, obviously, and uh, a distinctive switch that is there as far as basic functionality would go. So um, when you're looking at it from a server environment, normally within the virtual space, you've got, you've got a massive cost saving. Uh, instead of you actually having physical service incorporated, you can virtualize that environment. And uh, some might also even want to argue that from a technical point of view, it, 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 it forms a, a brilliant testing ground, really. Um, when you get uh, certain, certain softwares, uh, certain updates, you might want to uh, find out how these actually function um, within the virtual environment so that if anything detrimental uh, happens, it doesn't actually affect uh, the physical entities. So you can you can look at at probably if you like I was saying a couple of moments ago, if you want to test new softwares, you could um, run it in the virtual environment, get a feel of it. If you're good to go with it, then naturally you can always adopt it uh, in the uh, um, physical space. Same difference would go with with with, with uh, a certain um, uh, updates as far as these particular softwares are concerned. So if you've got a Linux, a new um, a, a Linux, Linux uh, um, a production there, 
that you'd probably want to test out uh, before you actually move on to it. As far as your physical environment is concerned, you can use the virtual space to do that. Same difference would go with, with upgrades of, of, of uh, certain softwares like your Windows. Maybe that move from, from the 8.1 that was experienced a couple of years ago to, to 10. Um, just testing exactly what's happening there in terms of, of, of functionality and, and, and um, probably compatibility with existing hardwares and uh, to some extent certain uh, softwares, you can use that. And then like I was saying earlier on, there's been a tendency that certain upgrades, I think um, you, you've, if, if you've been following um, the press and if you've, some of you might even have experienced this personally, that certain updates on the Windows 10 platform have not been uh, functioning the way they should uh, uh, in certain instances. So you can use these uh, platforms to, to typically look at, at uh, basic testing uh, environments there. So what we're gonna do is uh, um, look at, at, uh, at, at VirtualBox. Now remember, um, it's, it's, it's a software package that um, typically has been designed arguably to, to, to avail for that virtualized uh, environment. So you're gonna search for um, VirtualBox there. And obviously from, from, from the uh, results that you get, um, you get Oracle uh, VM VirtualBox, uh, which is short for Oracle Virtual Machine uh, uh, VM uh, uh, or uh, VirtualBox there. And the actual site that you're looking at is the first option that we've got, which is uh, www.virtualbox.org. And from the list, uh, of options uh, or results that we've got. We're gonna obviously select uh, the downloads uh, space there. Um, and once you select that, naturally, like I've said before, regardless of whichever platform that you're using, Windows, Linux, uh, Mac, you will have an, an installation file, obviously, that is applicable as far as your environment there is concerned. So the current offering that they've got there is 6.1.14, as far as version is concerned, ultimately, one and the same thing really in terms of, of functionality. But um, for most of you who might have used this before, you might find that with 6.1.14, uh, there is a, 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 a bit of a, of, of, of a you would go upgrade or an interface change really, but uh, the underlying architecture is one and the same thing. So um, again, like I was saying before, it's, 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 it's all dependent on, 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 on um, on, 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 on different versions really. So if you, if you use a version that is below the one that is currently displayed there, it will still work uh, fine without any distinctive issues. As long as you get the right settings incorporated, your virtual machine should function without any distinctive problems. So again, whichever um, uh, platform that you're using, um, you can then uh, naturally select the appropriate uh, installation file there. So uh, if you're using Windows like I am, uh, select the Windows host uh, option there. And uh, it's about 103 megs as far as uh, um, uh, uh, space there is concerned. And then once that is downloaded, actually you can uh, um, look at uh, basic installation. So what I'm going to do is just show, because I've already installed this. So let's see how we can work with, uh, um, with this uh, virtual box, how we can set it up accordingly so that we know uh, we're sorted as far as our virtual environment is concerned. So I'm going to share my desktop here. Um, just let me know if you can't view it um, in the next couple of sec seconds here. I'll share my desktop. Um, so I'm assuming there, okay, sorted. So that's our desktop. I've got VM uh, um, um, virtual box already installed. So what we're going to do is Quickly uh, run it, and then set it, set uh, set up our uh, machines according. So that's what your uh, virtual box would typically uh, look like, um, as far as your, your your virtual environment is concerned. So you've got the file, the machine, the network, and the help uh, tabs incorporated there. So we're going to create two distinctive machines. One is a client. One is uh, naturally a a server. And like I've said in previous sessions you would want to ensure that uh, virtualization is activated in BIOS uh, before uh, installation in certain instances. Some of you might uh, um, uh, be in certain uh, um, scenarios where your virtualization platforms have already been um, or are activated by default as far as, as, as your machines they are concerned. One of the other ways of checking for this is um, 
um, uh, finding out if you've got uh, both 32-bit and 64-bit options when you uh, create your machines. We'll see that in a moment as far as configurations would go. But to be on the safe side, uh, run your virtualization beforehand. And uh, uh, naturally, like I said before, that's incorporated within your BIOS. So ultimately what you want to do is uh, enable that. So normally, depending on the machine that you're using or the brand, it should be labeled or listed as a virtualization technology uh, that you obviously need to, 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 to enable. Uh, in certain instances, you might even find uh, other options listed as hyper-threading, but your virtualization technology becomes your default go-to. Um, and then you obviously need to enable that and uh, restart your machine and you should be good to go. If uh, you want to test beforehand, like I said before, install your virtual box and when you create the machines, you'll see in a moment that uh, you should have both 32-bit and 64-bit options listed. If you find yourself in an environment where uh, the 32-bit um, is the only one that is listed there in terms of the different versions of, 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 of uh, the OS that you can install, and ultimately, what it means is uh, you need to, 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 to activate your, your, your virtualization platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the machine uh, um, tab there. And from the uh, context or drop down menu that appears, you've got new and then add. So we're going to go with the new um, option. And then once we've done that, as you can see on screen there, we've got uh, uh, um, a dialog box there that uh, is, 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 is uh, prompting us to, to, to enter a name. You've got the actual uh, um, location in terms of where that uh, virtual machine folder is going to be incorporated. And by default, you've got that as um, within the actual current user that you've got. And uh, um, that particular folder is created uh, underneath that or within that distinctive space. Then you've got the type of OS that you want to run there. So you've got different types of operating systems that you can work with. Uh, your Windows, your Linux, Solaris, um, and other dependent on, on, on environments. And then again, you've got the version. So this is exactly what I was uh, mentioning a couple of moments ago, that by default, if you click on uh, the drop-down um, um, icon there, you should find different versions. So you've got the 32-bit and you've got a 64-bit uh, 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 version of the different types of OSs that are there. If yours is only listed as 32-bit, then it means virtualization has not been activated uh, in your uh, environment. So I think uh, just make sure you take distinctive uh, uh, cognizance of, 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 of that fact there. So if you're looking at uh, uh, creating your machines again, or uh, loading your, 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 your virtual platforms, select machine, and then from uh, the menu that appears there, um, you're going to select new, and then from there, you're going to uh, then populate. So in this particular instance, I'm gonna label this as uh, Kincaid client, and um, I'm gonna go with obviously Windows, uh, the Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows. The version I'm going to go with is going to be 10, 64 bit, right? And now remember, like, as um, just uh, just uh, make sure that you use ISOs when uh, you're going to be loading your, your your operating systems as opposed to executables. So the actual uh, remember when you're installing your operating system generically, you normally use a setup file for that. But in in in, in this particular instance, you've got a, a disk image or an ISO that you need to incorporate when you're looking at uh, uh, installation there. So I'm going to next this, and then as you can see, I'm I'm currently sitting at a maximum of four. So to make sure that the both both of my machines at least uh, uh, can can be created without uh, um, some 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 kind of, of, of sluggishness, I'm going to bring this down to one, which is uh, quite inappropriate really in terms of of um, uh, the amount of RAM that should be allocated to your machines. There, remember we said that we need to at least have two gigs installed, but that's always in accordance to the actual um, total amount of RAM that you've got installed. Because what happens is, if you've got, uh, if you look at the current situation that I've got, if I if I select two gigs of RAM, it means that my host is left with two gigs of RAM, all right? And if I run the other machine, or if I set up the other machine and I select two gigs of RAM again, it means that there's no more RAM technically that is left for my uh, host or physical machine. And that could be a bit detrimental in terms of making sure that there's a smooth running of all three machines uh, simultaneously or concurrently at the same time. So here I'm going to go half and half, which is still quite um, minimal really, as far as functionality is concerned, but this is more for uh, illustration purposes. So I'm going to go uh, next there. 
And then um, once I do that, from uh, um, uh, the options that I've got here, I'm going to select create a virtual hard disk. And like I said before, remember your 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 um, uh, your limits really, or, or more or less the capacities that you need to incorporate is going to be uh, 50 gigs uh, for both machines. Uh, just give me two seconds. Looks like we've got someone trying to access uh, our. Uh, our Okay, cool. Not a problem. Let's go back to our desktop. All right, so um, what I was mentioning a couple of seconds ago is that you need to allocate, uh, 50, you need to have at least 100 gigs free, which is 50 gigs a piece for both machines, so your client and your server. Uh, we're going to click on uh, create there, and then um, from the menu that appears, we need to, or the dialog box or the options that we've got, we're going to select VHD or virtual hard disk, and then you're going to next that. And then when it comes to the actual creation of the storage, dynamically allocated is, is the fastest way of creating your, your virtual machine. But um, it, it, what it means now is that your, 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 your disk space is going to be um, uh, populated as you use it. So you dynamically assigned it means that uh, it, it's as if you start with, with the zero uh, uh, gigs there and then you populate it ac uh, accordingly in terms of adding content or installation of files and so on until you get to the required maximum, which is going to be your, your 50 gigs. On the other hand, the physics fixed size means that you will then physically allocate uh, um, uh, 50 gigs as is on your uh, distinctive hard uh, 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 space there. Um, as far as, as allocation is concerned, it takes slightly longer, obviously, uh, relative in certain instances dependent on the specs of the machine that you've got but uh, like I said before dynamically allocated a lot faster but always make sure that you have the 100 gigs free regardless of you uh, um, uh, selecting the, 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 the uh, uh, dynamic or, or um, uh, fixed size just at least with fixed size you can argue that 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 space has already been, been allocated or taken but when you go dynamically uh, allocated always make sure that at any point in time You've got that 100 gig uh, uh, space free, the 50 for the client and naturally the 54, uh, uh, the actual uh, server incorporated there. So we're going to next that. And then uh, uh, by default, it will now show you the location where that virtual hard disk space has been created. And uh, naturally, as you can see there, uh, within a specific username, within the uh, uh, virtual box, uh, virtual machines folder, and within that folder, you've got uh, the Kincaid client. And then naturally the, 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 the virtual hard disk that is allocated to um, that client uh, machine there. And by default, you've got the 50 gigs incorporated there. We will leave it as is select create. And as you can see on my left hand side now, the, the, the client machine um, has been created. All right. So um, what, what you've typically done or what, what I've typically done in this instance is, is have a machine that has no OS. So think of it as you walk into a store, you buy a laptop or you buy a, a, a out any software incorporated. So there is a processor, there is um, X amount of RAM incorporated, uh, um, and naturally there is a, um, a hard disk or there is a hard drive incorporated there. Um, ultimately, uh, there's no operating system or any software installed. So that's what we've created. So in terms of installation now, remember you now need to, uh, incorporate um, the actual ISO file or the disk uh, uh, image file that has your OS uh, so that you can successfully install your distinctive um, uh, operating system and ultimately have a, a, a proper running uh, running machine. So what we've got is a shell. Like I said before, it's exactly the same concept of you uh, walking into a store or, getting, or, or, or literally having a machine that is there with all the, the, the physical attributes in terms of the RAM, in terms of the uh, uh, processor, in terms of the hard drive, but no software is installed as far as that uh, particular machine there is concerned. The same difference applies when you're looking at creating your um, uh, server. We'll go machine again, uh, we'll go new. And uh, in this uh, instance, we'll call this one uh, the Kincaid uh, server. All right. And then um, again, Windows, but remember this is 2012 we're running. 
So from the version uh, options that we've got, we're going to go and select um, the 2012-64 bit. All right. Um, as you can see, we, we don't have a 32-bit option uh, incorporated there. Normally uh, applicable, obviously, when you're looking at it from 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 a server side uh, point of view. And your 64-bit versions are your default go-to as far as basic functionality is concerned. Why? Because remember, limitations associated with 32-bit operating systems or 32-bit systems in general is that you've got a limitation in terms of the amount of RAM that you can use, which is four gigs. So it, it makes sense for you to have a 32-bit uh, client operating system, but it doesn't make much sense for you to have a 32-bit server operating or server uh, system, really, because normally with servers, you will need to have much more than uh, four gigs of RAM in order for it to function appropriately or in order for it to provide those services in a much more smooth fashion as far as basic functionality is concerned. So normally you'll find servers sitting with 16, uh, 32, 64 uh, gigs of RAM as distinctive examples. So you can't do, remember from computer architecture, you can install more than four gigs of RAM on a 32-bit system, but you can't use more than um, um, four gigs of RAM. So ultimately when it comes to, 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 to service, it becomes, um, it, it defeats the purpose, really, for you to be running a server if you only can, can get a maximum of four gigs of RAM as far as, far as basic usage there is concerned. It's not um, adequate as far as uh, functionality goes. So your 64-bit your uh, because it becomes your, your default uh, uh, go-to there when you're looking at server software. So Windows 12, 2012, 64-bit, I'm going to next that. And then again, bring this down to 1024 because of, of the maximum that I currently have here. Remember, this maximum is as associated with the um, with the host. So in your environment, again, same difference would apply. If you're sitting with the eight gigs of RAM, it will show eight gigs of RAM there. And then you will just need to allocate two gigs a piece, which would then mean, like I said before, you got your 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 four gigs for the actual uh, for the actual host. Any any uh, um, any. RAM really that is much more than than sixty than than eight rather would do it, would be applicable as well because you 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 will have uh, some kind of smooth functionality as far as your uh, virtual machines uh, and your your host or your physical machine is concerned. So we're going to next that again create a virtual hard disk um, uh, set at uh, fifty gigs uh, by default. We create uh, we're going to select uh, VHD which is your virtual hard disk. You next that, and then dynamic allocated. Uh, or next that uh, uh, again, it will show you the location in which that particular uh, virtual hard disk is going to be uh, incorporated, and then ultimately um, shows you the space uh, we uh, create, and then we're good to go. So we've got uh, client and server uh, uh, incorporated within our within our environments. All right. Like I said before, these particular machines are completely off. Um, no um, uh, uh, software has been installed. So either client or, or, or a server, you've got no um, operating system installed there. You've got no applications obviously installed as far as uh, usage would go. So we've got our, we've got our physical, we've got our, 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 our um, simulation of the physical machines, right? Uh, you've got your RAM, you've got your hard drive, obviously you've got a processor that is running there. Now, what you need to understand is we've, we are trying to mimic uh, an environment where if you go back to your, to, your, to, your, to your POE document there, you'll discover that you've got a physical um, computer system and then you've got a physical, another com physical computer system. The difference between the two is that one is running client operating, a, a client operating system, the other one is running a server operating system, which means that one is a client, the other one is a server, and then you've got a convergence point, which is going to be a switch, and you're using cables to connect to, to, to the central device uh, as far as your setup is concerned. So you want to have the same, uh, you want to simulate. So we want to have exactly the same uh, setup within our virtual space, which means we'll need VirtualBox to have an, a, a part of it or to have a, a, an applet within it or to have the architecture within it mimic an actual switch that will then connect um, um, your client uh, to your server on a core level, all right? Obviously, uh, um, what determines connectivity, what determines the kind of services is uh, the actual roles that you end up uh, activating, 
But at the end of the day, on, on a core level, you want to have a scenario where you've got that connectivity. So what you will need to do is uh, in, in both your client and your server environments, I'm gonna, so, so obviously when you click on each one of these, as you can see, when it's highlighted in blue like that, it means that the, that's the current machine that you've got uh, or that you've uh, uh, typically activated or indicated. And by default, even if you look at um, the right hand side here where you've got uh, uh, the different labels that are there in the general section it will show you which machine you're running and obviously which operating system is typically supposed to be incorporated there so when you right click um, in that uh, um, highlighted space you've got a context menu that appears uh, and from that context menu or from that uh, uh, um, options menu that appears you've got the settings um, option that is there so you're going to select that and once you select the settings uh, option there, we want to go to the network part, right? And uh, by default, you'll find that it will it will um, have your label as on adapter one, they attach to NAT. Now, remember we've mentioned NAT before. We said that NAT is, is short for network address translation and its main purpose is to translate or to, 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 to convert internal addressing schemes uh, to uh, one particular uh, uh, public uh, uh, um, address that enables connectivity to an external network. Because remember, we've mentioned this before, internal addressing schemes are non-routable. What does that mean? We cannot connect to any, ex any external network if you've got your machines or your gadgets assigned a, uh, a private addressing scheme. So you've got uh, the, the, the private addressing scheme that falls within class uh, A of IP version 4. Same difference would go with a private addressing scheme that falls in class B, another one that falls in uh, class C. So in order for those addresses to um, um, uh, connect to an external network, doesn't, remember your external networks are not just the internet, but it's any network that is without the confines of your own. We will need to have uh, uh, some kind of net architecture incorporated that is normally uh, configured on your uh, router that then enables connectivity to your um, uh, external networks. Remember, by default, your routers are your 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 uh, the devices that deal with 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 with, with logical addresses, which are your IPs that typically map map rather pathways that enable um, um, movement from one distinctive network to uh, the other. So what you want to do is make sure that we, we're not, we don't want to work with NAT. We want to work with a, with, 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 with a switch, a generic switch that just enables connectivity on, on, on of your local area network. Because in this particular instance, while we're trying to recreate a client-server relationship, ultimately what we're doing is also creating a local area network. And in our local area network, we've got three distinctive devices. We've got your client, we've got your uh, uh, switch, we've got your, your server. So ultimately, we want to create an internal network. So we want to create a local area network. So in order for that to happen, it means that the network setting in your in your in your in your uh, virtual machines should be changed to internal network as opposed to net. So if you click on 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 the drop down um, um, menu there, as far as that particular uh, section is concerned, you'll find there's net. There's bridged adapter. There's internal network, host only adapter, generic driver, net network cloud network and then not attached. So what we want to select in order for these two gadgets uh, or in order for these two devices to communicate, in order for us to actually create that local area network configuration or in order for us to have your virtual box platform mimic an actual switch or centralized device, we now need to select internal network. So you need to do this for both machines. So um, right click, uh, from the drop down or uh, options menu that appears there, you'll select settings. From your settings, you'll find uh, um, network in your, in your, in your left hand nav navigation uh, section there. And then once you uh, select network, by default, you'll have NAT activated or selected. What you will need to do is change it to internal network uh, uh, as far as your uh, settings there are concerned. So we're going to uh, click on OK for that. Same difference would apply for your um, uh, server. So again, if you can, you can, you can also even look at the, own, the, the the summary of the machine that you've got. So remember, you've got general system, display, storage, audio, network, USB, all the down, all the way down to description. In your network section, there, your server is still represented as NAT. We need to change this uh, in order for it to to to, to represent 
um, or in order for it to be internal uh, uh, network. So you're going to right click on that from the context menu or the drop down menu that appears, you're going to select settings. And then obviously from your settings section there, you will go network and then change uh, what is uh, uh, incorporated as NAT by default to uh, internal network, you're okay that and you're good to go. So if you look at your summary now, your network now shows internal network for both the server and the client. All right, so make sure that uh, before you, 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 you configure anything, before you install anything, uh, just uh, uh, to avoid uh, you forgetting and just to avoid discrepancies now where you, 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 you are failing to have your client connect to the server and vice versa, make sure that you change the network settings there to internal network. And the reason why we're doing it is to make sure that uh, um, we uh, have this particular virtualized uh, setup mimic um, or simulate a local area network. All right, so once that is done, we are now looking at, at loading your, your, your operating system. So let's, uh, let me see if I can start with my server here. By you, you, you are familiar with the whole uh, concept of installing your, 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 your OS. You've done it a couple of times before now. Uh, so that should be it's, it's an alien culture, really. Um, you're all familiar with what is happening as far as uh, uh, basic installation of, of, of your client operating system. I think one thing that I, I need to, to indicate again is that when you install your client, which will, I'll show you uh, what's happening with the server, it's exactly one and the same thing. Um, when you install your client, make sure that the Windows 10 that you've got installed or that you're installing, uh, that Windows 10 ISO is going to be a pro version, all right? Not Windows 10 uh, home, because with the home, you got you obviously have a problem in terms of joining a domain, all right? Remember, home edition is... is you could argue that is, is, is limited to work groups. So you can only uh, uh, work with those the distinctive work groups as far as your, 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 your Windows Home um, uh, edition there is, con is, is concerned. So make sure that when you install your Windows uh, um, uh, 10 software there, you're working with uh, Pro because Pro now obviously enables you to, 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 to join a domain. Because remember, one of the things that you obviously need to do is when you install your server, um, like we mentioned before, installing the software on its own is, is not enough to make the machine a server. You need to then add or specify what the roles uh, this particular server is going to be providing for, or what type of server this particular machine is going to be. And obviously one of those would be um, your, your Active Directory domain services that would then enable your server to become a DC or a domain controller. So ultimately now what that means is uh, if you've got a domain controller, if, remember you can't work with a domain controller if you don't have a domain. And we mentioned before that a domain is is arguably another type of of, of it's, it's it's just another term for network. But this time you're looking at it from a specified point of view that uh, uh, is inclined towards those directory based um, architectures or models that we've we've discussed in our previous uh, in our previous sessions. So you can only then have your client join the domain, obviously to be able to get, uh, or to be able to be part of, of, of the domain that uh, you've created. If you're running Windows uh, uh, Windows 10 Pro, you can't do that with, uh, with home, because home, the home edition is limited to, 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 to work groups. So just make sure you take uh, cognizance of that fact. So now we want to uh, load our operating system. Remember we just said a couple of moments ago that these two machines are just uh, uh, are shells, really. It's, uh, the, you've just got the hardware, no software has been installed. So we want to now install the, so uh, the softwares that then uh, um, make these uh, particular machines um, either a, a, a client or a server. So if you look at your server uh, uh, um, uh, setup there, once it's been selected, you've got the start icon that is just above uh, uh, the generic uh, descriptions of um, what is happening in terms of, 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 of that particular server. So what you want to do is then select a start. So you select your machine and then you select start. And then um, I think you can already see how uh, uh, slow this machine is because of, of the amount of resources that are there. So it's, it's, it's of utmost importance for you to have the, the, the right amount of, of, of RAM uh, incorporated there. So once that uh, um, is, is selected, you will now need to, to indicate where your operating system is sitting or where your installation file is. 
So remember, I mentioned before that if you're running it from a generic point of view, uh, normally you'll have a setup, uh, obviously a setup file there, and then uh, you run your, your executable. But in this instance, because we're running a virtual machine, your ISOs are your, your default go-to or your disk image files are your default go-to as far as uh, installation there is concerned. So from that uh, menu that you, or from that uh, window or dialog box that you find and see on screen there, it will show you that it's currently empty because there is no uh, image that has been loaded or there's no indication in terms of where our operating system is going to be loading from. So there's, an, there's a folder icon that is just next door to that uh, um, uh, um, uh, section there. So we're gonna select that. And then once we do that, we're going to then uh, uh, click on the add icon. So if you're using older versions of, of VirtualBox, ultimately what's happening there is that um, the moment you click on that icon, it will automatically takes you to um, the, 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 the storage location on your, on your computer system or on your, on your host. And then you now need to specify specifically where your actual um, um, ISO is, and then uh, locate, once you've located that ISO, indicate which ISO you're going to be running. But in this instance, with this later version of, of VirtualBox, you've got uh, this uh, uh, particular dialog box that appears labeled as optical disk uh, selector there. Remember, it's actually mimicking an environment where you actually plug in uh, physically um, a, 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 a disk within your, your, your optical drive and then obviously your, your operating system is going to be installing from there. So we'll select add. Um, and once we do that, it will then populate with uh, the specifics in terms of, 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 of um, uh, locations. So if you look at, uh, I had initially uh, incorporated this with the previous group. So just for you to see exactly what's happening there. So this uh, uh, software is in the documents uh, our folder as far as this particular machine there is concerned. And then within uh, the different um, uh, folders that we've got incorporated there, we, uh, we want to incorporate a, a uh, we want to work with the Windows uh, um, Server 2012 edition. So we're going to double click on that. And as you can see, you've got an ISO incorporated there. All right. And uh, we're going to select that ISO uh, or the disk image and then um, click on open and automatically you find it labeled there. So you've got your uh, Windows Server 2012, uh, the 64 bit version uh, ISO there, that's about 3.9 um, odd gig uh, incorporated there. And then once that is uh, selected, you uh, select choose. And as you can see, we now have the Windows Server 2012 um, um, R2 ISO indicated in, 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 in the section in terms of the actual ISO we're going to be running our operating system from. Then we'll select start. And as you can see, your operating system uh, begins to load. So obviously dependent on, on the speed of, 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 of your machine there. It should run slightly um, faster. And then obviously your, your installs are, are default, so we'll just next that, and then obviously select um, <clears throat> our setup there. So I think uh, um, the 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 slowness of 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 of, of um, that current machine there will will definitely give you an idea in terms of why 
it's important to have the, the, the right amounts of RAM. And here I'm just running, so this, with this now, I've got a scenario where I'm just running two machines, my host and then the actual uh, server itself. So you can imagine if I was to run uh, the client simultaneously, then the machine would, 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 um, would be non-responsive at all as far as, as, as uh, um, uh, usage there is concerned. So make sure you've got the right amounts of RAM incorporated. Now, the other thing you will, you will discover as far as, as, as the Windows uh, Server platform would go is that you can't continue without incorporating an actual key. With client, on the other hand, remember you can just select skip or do this later during your installation uh, uh, process and you'll still be able to install um, your 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 um, OS without uh, distinctive issues. Obviously, you'll need to then activate it at a later stage in order for you to keep uh, uh, using or utilizing full features. But when it comes to basic installation, um, you, you technically you don't need a key at at, at a specific point in time. Um, installation can still proceed. But on the other hand, when you're dealing with your server. Naturally, you'll need to then have uh, an, an actual key incorporated. And we're using uh, Windows Server um, 2012 release two, right? So all you have to do is just uh, search for that on the net. So if you go to your Google um, um, in your search bar, they just type out Windows uh, 2012 R2 keys. So Windows 2012 release two keys. And uh, ultimately you'll, you'll get um, the first option that is distinctively displayed there is the, um, it's actually a document from, from, from Microsoft where you find uh, you've got Windows Server um, 2012 uh, um, released to uh, standard, then you've got data center, then you've got essentials. So you can select uh, between data center or um, um, standard as far as the actual keys they are concerned. They'll still function without any issues and actually as far as, as, as uh, this particular assessment is concerned, whether you use data center or standard, uh, it's all up to you because at the end of the day, the, uh, both of those uh, uh, distinctive uh, uh, additions will still provide um, um, the, the right uh, uh, functionality or features that are relevant and needed. So if you, once you've searched that, uh, you will get an actual key there. So like I said before, you've got standard, you've got data center, you've got essential. So I'm gonna go with standard here. So I've got D two uh, nine, uh, sorry N nine P there. I've got uh, three P uh, six X nine. Then I've got uh, two R three nine C um, seven R T uh, C D. And then the last one is in DV, uh, JX. So let's see if that particular key um, would work for us. Uh, I'm just going to click on next. We've sorted as far as that particular key goes. So with, with server, try and avoid uh, the whole issue of I know sometimes, uh, um, like I said before, most if not all of us have, have been installing OSs uh, uh, um, for years and, 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 and on end now. So it, 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 it becomes second nature in terms of, of the whole next, 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 next uh, kind of behavior. But now when you look at, at server, it's very important for you now to make sure that you select the right uh, options there. So by default, you find server core installation uh, incorporated. So I think that there's that uh, natural itch of just selecting next, right? But uh, in this particular instance, what this would then mean is that if you just select next year without selecting the right one, the server that you end up, or the server um, software that you end up uh, um, um, completing as far as installation is concerned, is the command line uh, uh, server interface. So in essence, what it means is you, 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 you're not working with GUI, you've got command line. Works brilliantly, obviously, if you're technically inclined, if you've been using a, a, a server platform for a while, it, it, it's, it's quite easy for you to just incorporate uh, commands and you're good to go. But now remember, if you're not familiar with the process, uh, it becomes, uh, sometimes it becomes quite um, uh, um, unuser friendly, really. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar, remember we've, we've discussed uh, uh, um, your 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 
um, CLI before your command line interface. And we said that obviously the reason why that, that is preferable from a technical point of view is that it's a lot faster because you've got less resources that are available for the display. And at the same time, you use less bandwidth as far as, as, as configurations there uh, are concerned. So less resources, faster for usage, and then uh, less bandwidth. But ultimately, if you're not familiar with the, with the environment and if you're not uh, um, um, uh, comfortable per se, as far as actual uh, uh, commands and syntaxes are concerned, then it makes it very really difficult for you to use, if not nearly impossible, for you to use your machine in those environments. So GUI is your preferred or your, your, your default go-to in, in, in generic sense. Uh, why? Because you've got icons that are incorporated there. It makes it a lot easier in certain instances for you to actually run um, um, systems using that type of interface. So a technically inclined would go with, with, uh, with your, with your um, uh, CLI environment, but you now need to make sure that everything that you, you, you do, you know exactly which command to use and you know in which environments this needs to be uh, typically incorporated. So you also even have um, a description that is there that this is a, a recommended reduces management, um, uh, servicing by installing only what is needed for most servers to typically uh, uh, run as far as roles and applications are concerned. It doesn't include a GUI, but can be fully managed, right? So remember that, that, that like we said before, CLI is an interface every which way. So as, as difficult as it might be, it was, it, it's, it's still an interface that does exactly the same thing that is provided for by the GUI environment. The only difference, like I said before, you need to uh, know specifically what's happening with commands in this uh, uh, the distinctive environment there. So your GUI is your default go-to. Uh, make sure that um, uh, when you get to this uh, uh, distinctive dialog box there, you select uh, the GUI version, all right, as far as your actual server is concerned. So you've got your server 2012 R2 standard, which is the, uh, the one that is incorporated by the key that we, we just entered. And ultimately, as far as that is concerned, we're not gonna go with the, the, the server core installation, you go with the server uh, uh, with GUI. Once you've selected that, uh, you mix that. And then naturally everything else um, is, is, is a bit repetitive in terms of what you've done before, especially when you're looking at it from a client uh, point of view, you accept the terms, um, uh, you mix that. And then naturally you're gonna go with a custom install because remember we've got, a, we've got a hard drive that's got nothing on it. We're not actually upgrading from anything. We've got a current hard drive that is uh, incorporated or that virtual hard disk that we've just created, the 50 gig one, that has got nothing incorporated on it. So we want to go with a custom install. And then obviously from the custom install, it will show you that, okay, look, you've got a, a 50 gig uh, hard drive that is there with an allocated space. Um, that is what we're going to be using as far as our basic um, installation there is concerned. And obviously everything else, becomes um, um, a second nature really, like I was saying, in terms of, of comparisons with installing your, your client. Now, the other thing that you'll discover is that because you're dealing with the server, you remember with a client, you've got the option of just incorporating a username and you're good to go, right? You don't even have to put in a password. Um, when you're looking at uh, generic installation, you'll still get to your desktop or you still complete your, your installation successfully. But on the other hand, when you're dealing with server uh, software, um, you've got an administrator account that is created by default. That administrator account needs to have a password incorporated. Otherwise, you cannot uh, continue with that stage of installation. So you'll have an administrator account that is incorporated, and then you'll need to then uh, plug in a password. And I think for the purposes of, of uh, just uh, making sure that we've got a uniformity across to avoid um, um, instances where we end up forgetting uh, passwords and so on. Let's just stick to, I think uh, the document mentions password one with a capital P. So we can stick with that as far as your administrator password there. So it's obviously not as uh, safe as you'd want it to be, but for the, progress, for the purposes of assessment, it's uh, uh, more than enough really. So you've got password one with a capital P that you'll incorporate. And you'll also discover that um, as part of your server installation, as part of the login process, you will need to incorporate Control, Alt, and Delete. All right, so you need to hit uh, those keys simultaneously. Control, Alt, Delete. It will take you to your uh, uh, generic uh, login page where you'll then uh, need to incorporate your, your your password. Now, if you're working with your with your with your 
with your host, the moment I hit control, alt, delete, or the moment you hit control, alt, delete, it takes you to the options associated with the actual, um, um, with your actual host, which is, uh, which one part and parcel of that would be task manager options and so on. So to avoid that, what you will then need to do is when you're dealing with the, with, with virtual box, you will incorporate control, alt, delete in a different fashion. Instead of actually hitting the keys on the keyboard, you'll have the program automatically uh, uh, insert uh, um, uh, these for you, or you'll have the, the, the program insert these for you as far as indication is concerned. So when you're looking at your machine there, you've got your file machine view input devices and help. What you'll select is the input section. And then from uh, um, the drop down or context menu uh, that appears there, you've got keyboard and mouse integration. So you're going to select the keyboard option. And then from your keyboard option, you'll discover that you've got keyboard settings, soft keyboard. Then underneath that, you've got insert, control, all delete, insert, control, break, insert, insert. You've got uh, insert, uh, uh, print screen all the way down to insert host key combo. So ultimately, this is how you incorporate uh, insert, uh, uh, or this is how you plug in now your control or delete. You will not physically hit the keys on, 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 on the keyboard because ultimately that takes you to the control or delete um, um, menu or options associated with your host, which will naturally be, uh, again, take you to task manager, uh, change account or switch account, shut down and so on. So to avoid that, you'd uh, uh, select control or delete in this particular fashion. So once again, what you'll need to do is you select on the input, you select uh, uh, the input um, tab there or menu, and then from uh, the drop down menu that appears, you select um, a keyboard, and then by default, you'll find uh, the different options that are there, in, uh, control or delete being one of them as far as your, your, your environments um, are concerned. All right? So that's how you'd incorporate your um, control or delete in order for you to then uh, incorporate or enter your chosen password as far as your actual server is concerned. So there are two distinctive things that uh, um, we just mentioned that uh, would not, I wouldn't really want to say hinder, but typically determine your, 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 your installation. So you've got a key that you need to incorporate. Without that key, you can't proceed. You also need to mint, uh, incorporate a password uh, uh, towards the end of installation there in order for you to, to, to successfully complete install as far as your server is uh, uh, concerned, right? So while we wait for, for installation in the background so that we see exactly what's happening there, the same would, uh, would, would, be, would be relevant as far as your, 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 your client is concerned. So ultimately, let me see if I can uh, minimize this for the time being. Uh, as you can see, I've got my, 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 my server currently running there and you all, obviously will have a preview in terms of, of, of what is happening in the background. As far as the client would go, like I said before, content that you're familiar with. So in this particular instance, what you'll uh, again do is once you click on that, you'll select your start. And then um, from your, your, your start section, um, from your start, again, you can see how slow the machine becomes if, you, if you're not sitting with the right amounts of, of, of RAM in, in incorporated there. So ultimately, once that starts again, so as you can see, it will then it, it will it will list the ISO of the previously installed uh, machine there. But now remember, it's a client that you want to run. So in essence, we will need to select the right ISO. So you click on that icon, and then you'll select Add. And uh, from what appears there, um, you will need to then. Um, Go to documents again. So this time I'm going to select um, the, the multiple um, uh, sections that are there, all right? Or the multiple uh, installation as far as your Windows 10 is concerned. So this is the ISO that I need. I want to select that one, open it. And as you can see, that's the one that is uh, selected there. I'll choose it. And ultimately, it will then show um, the, the right ISO that is incorporated. 
right? As far as your basic installs there is concerned. And then you continue the process as is. So again, with this, uh, um, with this, uh, with your client, just make sure that um, you select the right um, Windows install, like I was saying a couple of, of, of moments ago, that make sure that it's the pro version uh, as opposed to home. All right, make sure it's pro as opposed to home so that you avoid uh, discrepancies in terms of you being unable to then join a distinctive domain um, if, you, if you use the, the, the incorrect uh, um, uh, version of, 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 of Windows that you've got incorporated there. All right, so here, I'm not gonna go through this. Um, I'm just gonna cancel that and then uh, uh, shut down that machine. Uh, and close that and then just say power off machine. All right, so um, I think uh, that, 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 that should be that really as far as uh, um, installation is concerned. Ultimately, um, uh, um, this would, 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 would complete as is, like I said before, um, one of the, the, the completion screens that you'll find there is you needing to then incorporate uh, an actual um, a password. And then uh, in order for you to log in after you've, 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 you've specified the password, you'll then need to incorporate a control or delete in order for you to, 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 to successfully log into your, uh, to your server uh, platform there. All right, so ultimately that's, that's, that's pretty much that. Uh, we're gonna leave that one uh, uh, running really. Um, and then in our, in our next sessions, what we want to then do is start working with, with how to incorporate your, your, your um, IP address manually. Remember your servers and your distinctive uh, routers and um, switches, like we've mentioned before in the, in the previous exercise that we had, that you'd want to have these, um, have the IP addresses manually assigned uh, to avoid uh, any discrepancies there. Everything else, obviously, in terms of the, the rest of the computers that are within your network will need to, 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 to get services or we need to get an IP from the DHCP uh, a server as far as uh, configurations there. Um, are concerned. So, uh, if you look through that, uh, let me see if I can. I think we can. We can. Um, I'm sure we can then un. All right. So, what you then want to do is 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 uh, uh, ensure now that you look at, at 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 research as far as the actual document there is concerned. Um, ultimately, like I said before, you've got, uh, um, you need to then take distinctive screenshots of each individual section of uh, um, what you will be completing as far as actual activities within your, 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 your document base. So, so let me see if I can quickly share this again. You already have this. Um, so if you share this, uh, if I share this here, Okay, so this is the, the, the setup that we, we, we're mimicking, and as you can see, the complete um, the tasks that appear by taking screenshots of your configuration as evidence um, of configuration to be marked, obviously, by your tutor, and then uh, save those screenshots in an actual Word document. So you, it's just like inserting uh, images as far as your, 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 your Word document there is, 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 is concerned. So ultimately, like I said before, um, if you look through that document, the first section is looking at uh, what is happening as far as 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 um, you naming your domain accordingly? So if you look at uh, the first task, um, obviously we'll look at this in 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 our subsequent uh, sessions. But I'd want you to also look at uh, a research from your part as well. How you're going to be incorporating? We've already seen. I think in one of our sessions, I've already shown how you manually uh, incorporate an IP address as far as your computer system is concerned. It's the same thing that you do for your server. And ultimately, you'll need to incorporate the right uh, domain there. So ultimately, your domain will have your first name, initial, and surname, .com. That's the domain that you're creating. And then you'll have the IP addresses that are assigned as far as the actual um, server is concerned. So by default, your server will have the 192.168.20.2 IP address. That particular server would obviously be the same uh, server that would, would, would function in DHCP capacity, would function in DNS capacity, but on the other hand, they've now mentioned that you will incorporate a default gateway uh, IP address of 192.168.20.1 there. And then naturally take screenshots 
of uh, um, uh, incorporation as far as content is concerned. So you'll discover that some screenshots you don't actually have. So for instance, if you look at, at uh, uh, the screenshot that we have, um, what we've got listed there, screenshot one, two, and three, sometimes you might find that one screenshot will be able to identify or list uh, more than one task incorporated there. So it's not like you will have to have uh, one screenshot for each individual se section. You might find that one particular screenshot can indicate your computer name, uh, uh, can also indicate uh, the Active Directory uh, assigned, or I can uh, uh, incorporate the um, domain as well, as far as basic representation um, there is concerned. So do you see, so you've got uh, six distinctive uh, tasks that are there. Uh, do you research, I think the last, the next time we'll have sessions, we'll be looking at how to, to, to maybe add the roles associated with your server, and then how you can then configure these roles accordingly as far as your server environments um, um, are, con are concerned. But ultimately, not as involving really as far as, as basic functionality there is concerned. It's uh, quite simple in terms of, 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 of uh, uh, incorporating content. So remember the, the, the exercise that we did last time, we were looking at DHCP, uh, we we're discussing the scopes, and we had mentioned that, uh, remember, scope is just an IP address range that is associated with your uh, um, a network environment. One of the tasks that you find there is installing and configuring a DHCP server role. So you remember, this can only be possible if you've activated or if you've uh, distinctively indicated which specific type of role your server is going to be uh, um, providing for or which particular uh, service that your server is going to be providing for as far as your network environment is concerned. So we've already mentioned the DC, which is your domain controller, which obviously hosts the actual domain, which means that the network setup that you're typically trying to mimic here is going to be a, a directory-based uh, platform where you've got usernames and computer systems identified as, as objects within your, 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 your uh, network there. And within this DACP setup, you will need to reserve the first 10 IP addresses of any uh, distinctive scope that uh, you've got uh, incorporated there. And then obviously show uh, screenshots accordingly. So do your, 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 your research in terms of, of um, um, how you incorporate this. Although, uh, like I said before, we'll have a session just to, to try and, and, and make sense of it in terms of how you actually physically add um, uh, these roles as far as your server environments they are concerned. Ultimately, like I said before, because you've got an Active Directory uh, um, a domain controller incorporated there, you now have these organizational units that represent different groups of individuals within your um, um, network. And obviously within those groups and individuals, within those groups rather, you've got individuals now that you need to plug in. So you've got your usernames and uh, um, 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 more or less recommended passwords within your environment. Like I said before, it's exactly one in the same setup where you, you, you walk onto campus, you walk into any of the computer rooms there, you incorporate your username and password. That username and password is associated with a user profile, associated with a, a distinctive a student or user on campus, and then you've got rights and permissions associated with that. So you'll need to demonstrate um, um, appropriate linkage because what you'll then need to do now is that the client that you run or the client that you've got uh, running there, you'll need to, 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 to um, log in as one of these individuals. I think they've specified table as, 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 um, as, as an option there. Log in as that individual through your client for them to actually access uh, uh, content on, on, on the server, for them to actually access the domain as far as your, your, your environments um, um, uh, would go. So ultimately, you will also need to, to, to incorporate, this is something that I've mentioned before, the whole issue of the domain, making sure that your machine can enter the or can successfully join the domain. Like I said before, this is, and then um, I think you've got a Z drive scenario here, right um, as far as your particular machine uh, is concerned so remember if you look at it from 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 your own uh, personal spaces on campus you've got a drive that is allocated your student number that you can save your content that you can obviously access from any computer system on campus 
So it's exactly the same thing that you'll mimic here by creating a W uh, drive instead that will be mapped accordingly where this specific individual can successfully log in and access uh, as far as um, um, content there is concerned. Then that's your um, your task too in, 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 in a nutshell, not involving at all, but uh, um, it's important for you to make sure that you've got the right tools in place in order for you to, to, to run it uh, accordingly to avoid any uh, discrepancies there. Let's see if we can go back to, um, let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly uh, unshare this and then go back to, let's see if we can go back to the server there. And then from there we can, um, uh, let's see what's happening with our server. All right, so it looks like the uh, installation is, is, is about to complete. And then I'll show you exactly what I was talking about in terms of incorporating uh, username and password uh, set up then. And then I think once that is done, um, we should be good to go to actually start working on that. As far as your um, submissions, uh, I think um, hopefully by next week, I uh, should be done with, 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 with um, with marking and uh, feedback. So we might have that uh, incorporated next week and I know, um, I think that the, the third week of this month, it should be a vacation week. So we'll only have sessions um, after that week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, so let's get this, um, so once this is done, then we can see how we can incorporate the password, how we can then incorporate our um, control or delete. And then once that is done, we should be good to go. So any time this year, this thing will be complete. Okay, so while that is happening there, let me see if I've got uh, anything on chat here. All right, so Mbuso, I, I suggest you, you, you have a quick look at what, what, what I'm uh, undertaking first and then try and run it on your own, all right? As opposed to doing it while I'm running on session, sometimes it's easy for you to miss content there. So I hope that that that, that um, assists that. So maybe have a quick look at what, what, I'm, what I'm undertaking first before you, you start running it uh, concurrently. Because if you're trying to do it at the same time I'm doing it, sometimes you might uh, miss out as it, uh, I mean, it being a live session and all. But um, naturally, you can always go through that uh, the recorded session again um, to have a look there. 
and then you get an error that says 32 bit Windows holes are not supported. Um, so that means you need to activate activate uh, virtual uh, um, activate your virtual uh, or activate uh, your virtualization in BIOS. Like I was saying right at the beginning. Do that first and see if you can still get, uh, get the same error. Otherwise, what it might mean is that the processor that you've got cannot accommodate for, for virtualization there. Let me know if that makes sense then, Buso. And then, um, yeah, okay, su super. So we're back here. So I'm going to enter uh, password. So I'm just gonna go with password one. Uh, yeah, there you go. So. Password one is what I'm going to go with by default. Uh, incorporate the same uh, password there. So once I hit enter, it finalizes our settings. And then uh, in order for us to actually log on, um, it will ask for <clears throat> the control or delete uh, setup that is there. So Mbuso, let me know if you've um, you understood what I've just said there. If not, um, let me know. All right, so while we're waiting for that to happen, um, do we have any questions this far? Any questions this far? So as you can see, um, it now shows press Control Alt Delete to sign in. All right, so this is exactly what I was mentioning earlier on. So if you hit Control Alt Delete on your keyboard, it takes you to the Control Alt Delete menu of the actual host as opposed to the one associated with the um, the actual virtual environment there. So like I said before, uh, what you want to do now is that in, in order for you to actually incorporate uh, control or delete, you select uh, input there uh, from the keyboard that appears, you then um, incorporate insert control or delete. And the moment you do that, it takes you to this um, a distinctive, a distinctive login screen, and this is where you will need to um, incorporate that password to be entered while we're setting this up, which is password one. Uh, I can always check. Okay, so there you go, password one, and then hit enter, and ultimately that should lock you in. All right, so there you have it. So uh, generically, that's uh, what's happening as far as your, your, your server platforms, they are concerned. And then uh, the next time we should be uh, delving into a bit more detail in terms of how to look at uh, functionality there. All right, so do we have any questions or contributions or concerns there? Questions, contributions, concerns from the floor? Okay, manual is sorted. Uh, am I right to assume that that's the same for everyone? What you got for me there, Dean? Uh, Bajesh, are we all good there? 
Lebohang, Keenan, um, and Ethan there, Elita as well. Am I right to assume that you guys are good uh, in terms of, 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 of uh, understanding what's going on there? Keenan sorted. Lebokang is good. Kaylee, what's happening there? Sorted. Lita is sorted. Um, Ethan. Uh, Ethan, are you good there? Uh, and Dean, Brijesh as well. Are you guys uh, sorted, Krishna? I'm assuming your silence is content. Okay, cool. That's fine then. All right. So then, um, if, if if that is that, um, we're good to go. Let's see if we can go and practice. This clip is being recorded, so I think maybe in the next, uh, probably after our, our web development session, I'll upload this um, on, on 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 YouTube. Uh, if not uh, before, dependent. All right. But anyway, I'll send comms uh, every which way. Okay, so do we have any uh, um, any other any other questions or contributions there? All right, um, if that's the case, all good. Let's um, let's call it a day. Um, like I said before, go and do some 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 research and experimentation on, on what's happening here, and then should you still have issues, uh, pop me a mail, and I'll engage you on that platform accordingly. Otherwise, um, see you in the next 30 um, for, for, for the other session. But otherwise, um, stay safe. Stay positive. Keep smiling, at least for the next 30 minutes. All right, see you guys. Cheers.